lot of people have forgotten that there is this mammal that can bring back the strength that our people had. That gave strength to our people in many, many ways. It was their whole way of life. In the beginning, way back in our lives, Buffalo took care of us as they were our lodging, they were our clothing, they were our food. So they were everything, taking care of the tribes. And especially here in, in the plains areas. The Great Decimation of Bison in North America is a phenomenon that really was not repeated anywhere else in the world. We went from a huge number of animals, 30 to 60 million, down to a few thousand in a matter of 10 to 20, 30 years. So it was a very rapid decline. Well, the loss of bison affected not only the land, but the people that existed in that land. Their spiritual relationships, their social relationships were really built around this species known as me to the Blackfeet. Blackfeet have a long, deep, rich history of being a buffalo people. There's a very strong connection between the women and the buffalo. They had a good knowledge and sense of where the herds were, and they knew which cuts went to which family. So all of this knowledge about the buffalo was the women's. We started healing in there. We started healing the land. We started healing ourselves as human beings. And that can only mean a brighter future. The Ine Initiative originated out of the Blackfoot Confederacy. There's four uh, tribes, four nations that make up the Blackfoot Confederacy. We've got the Blackfeet, Kaina, or the Blood Tribe, the North Pagan, and the Siksika. Well, what we are envisioning a large free-ranging herd on their traditional lands. If we bring the bison back, we bring back a lot of the other animals, and we preserve the habitat, so it's far-reaching. Well, the Wildlife Conservation Society has this wonderful history, very rich and deep in the restoration of wildlife, but in particular bison. And so our organization used their zoological institution and some of their ability to gain the financial resources to save bison, to bring them back from the brink of extinction. And the American Bison Society's first meetings were right actually in the Lion House at the Bronx Zoo. We have had a relationship with the Blackfeet for a long time. In fact, in 1913, the Blackfeet came to New York to sort of share the wonder of their people. The Blackfeet are very, very oriented still, culturally and spiritually, to this animal. And so they themselves are enthused and excited about the prospect of bringing buffalo back into their lives. Well, this year, during the days of the Blackfeet, we had probably 300 people from Browning Middle School to do the buffalo hunt. What they do is some of the kids will be the buffalo and they'll wear buffalo robes. Everyone else is the camp who are taking the buffalo, you know, down to the buffalo corral, Piscan, they say. And the first time I seen the buffalo run, which was two years ago, I was with my mom. And she cried. She cried because she was born in the early 30s, and she was raised with women who had seen the buffalo days. And she cried because when those buffalo start moving, you can't tell the difference between a reenactment and a buffalo, you know? You guys do these hides. It really looks really neat. Almost looks real when you guys have those hides under, and there's three people under them. All right. I, I think the awakening that happens with them, when they're older, they're gonna be you know, parents or grandparents someday, and they'll meet with each other. And Days of the Blackfeet will probably still be going on, and they're gonna reflect back and they're gonna be able to say, I was in that buffalo run. Today my grandchildren are in the buffalo run. The difference may be is that it may be a real, true buffalo hunt. Well, it's very important to understand the resources that are around you that utilize for your survival for yourself and as a, as a tribe. So that's the whole point of why we did this reenactment to bring back that, that Blackfeet culture responsibility. After we acquired the horse 
A lot of our lifestyles changed, and so we're able to hunt the, the innate on horseback, and our people became very skilled. And so the Days of the Blackfeet provides for those students to go out and interact and ride horses, to understand how to handle horses, so it's a more experiential learning opportunity for the students. We're still trying to bring back some things to let our young people know in cultural ways. And at the same time, we're encouraging our young people to go ahead and go forth into the future, but have that background. The youth really, really, really want to be a part of it and see these animals. And so it's, it's a real good thing for them. We're kind of lost in our past and it was kind of gone for a while and now we brought it back. The way I feel, you know, I feel their wildlife just like everything else, and I would like to see them be able to roam, you know, just anywhere, you know, just as any other wildlife. This is a wonderful animal, fairly easy to count, to keep track of, to manage. It does most of the work itself. We don't need to do a lot of interventions, and so our real issues are social. Because the Great Plains has been fragmented and individuals and agencies and organizations who have to learn to cooperate and, and join into some conservation ventures and that's not an easy thing. And so our, our challenge really is getting people to agree to a long-term vision for bison on large landscapes. Getting people to agree to think about this animal as a wild animal that belongs on the land and can be an effective bioengineer shaping and sustaining that land. When we scan across the landscape, we see specific areas that have ecological significance, cultural significance, and spiritual practices. Chief Mountain was very important. It has great significance in their culture. At the same time, it is a wonderful landscape that sweeps out into the prairie and provides all the biological resources that would be useful in restoring and returning bison. It also then uh, is right at the U.S.-Canada border so that it creates an opportunity to think across the borders Blackfeet territory. So all those are very, very important attributes to create a particular conservation and heritage area that would be a homeland for bison in the near future. There are animal that is so peaceful, so spiritual, and I just pray that we get them back on these prairies and then that they're here again to remind us, this is what I stand for, I'm your people. Someday, I'm hoping that, that there are thousands of buffalo ranging from Chief Mountain into some of these prairie landscapes. If he comes back, it'll give a lot of hope to our young people, because they will realize that Ini was what kept their ancestors alive for thousands and thousands of years. I would like to see this land stay just as it is, and buffalo sitting here just as they are right now, and for my grandkids and great grandkids to be able to see and to have a, a part of them. I, I would like to see it like that.